Hello, everybody. My name is Jesus Diaz, and I'm going to be presenting our work entitled Foundations of Anonymous Signatures, Formal Definitions, Simplified Requirements, and a Construction Based on General Assumptions. Uh, this is joint work with uh, Jambo Bols and Markov Kalbais. Um, the outline of the talk is going to be roughly as follows. I'm going to start by giving some background on the main previous works upon which we build and we try to uh, generalize, namely group signatures, anonymous credentials, and ring signatures. Uh, I will try to describe their utility versus privacy trade-off that they achieve and that we are going to try to generalize. Uh, and in order to show how we unify them, I will describe our proposal, our proposed scheme, which we call Universal Anonymous Signatures, or UAS. Um, I will introduce to this scheme by giving its syntax and um, a high-level notion of the security properties that they need to meet. Um, then to convince you that they are, UAS is really universal, I will describe how we can instantiate group signatures, anonymous credentials, and ring signatures as concrete restrictions of UAS. Uh, and I, I will finalize the talk with um, uh, potential applications and future work. Um, now, group signatures, they were created by David Chum and Eugene Van Heest in 1991. Uh, there we have a, an authority who accepts users into a group. And once they are into the uh, part of the group, uh, these users can sign anonymously within the group, meaning that uh, they uh, will be able to produce signatures that any third party can verify. And these third parties will learn that the signature comes from a valid member of the group, but without um, knowing which concrete member produced it. However, there is typically an authority who can fully de-anonymize signers, meaning that this authority can extract the identity from a, a, an already produced group signature. Now, there are tons of variants, each of them with a slightly different de-anonymization capabilities, or how I will call it here, utility after signing. Um, because the information that can be extracted uh, via this de-anonymization de process can be used and it will be very useful for other orthogonal processes. Um, similarly, somehow anonymous credentials, they were proposed by David Chaum in 1985. Then we also have an authority who issues credentials. And these credentials typically have attributes like age, nationality, or things like that. Uh, and equ equipped with these credentials, uh, credential holders can prove claims based on these attributes. Um, typically, anonymous credentials have uh, issue or driven revocation, maybe not typically, but it's uh, not rare to see. Um, again, there are tons of variants, um, each of them with a slightly different information being revealed at issuance or presentation time. Um, and here I will refer to this as utility, as at issuance or signing. Um, finally, we have uh, ring signatures, which were proposed by Ribest, Samir, and Tauman in 2001. There, we don't have an authority. So signers create in an ad hoc way uh, groups um, and signatures, ring signatures are typically not de-anonymizable, although sometimes they can be linkable, meaning that um, if you receive two signatures that come from the same user, for instance, uh, you will be able to tell that they come from the same user. Again, there are tons of variants with a slightly different signature linkability uh, properties or as um, I'm, I'm Referring to this in this talk, they have different utility after signing. Um, now this is this is very nice. We have uh, multiple uh, primitives that achieve slightly different things, and already within its primitive group signatures, anonymous credentials, and ring signatures, we have tons of variants. This is nice, but at the same time, it is not nice because when you are designing a system, you very um, you need to, to to decide what utility you will be providing. And if, a later, if at a later point in time, you want to change that utility, um, that is not possible right now because you have already hard-coded your system with the concrete uh, primitive that you chose at the beginning. So we, are, we have uh, devised these universal anonymous signature schemes that allows you to precisely, dynamically, change this utility versus privacy trade -off. So the syntax that this UAS scheme provides, it begins with the setup, like most schemes, um, where even a security parameter, it outputs some 
general system parameters, like the algebraic groups that are going to be used and so on. Then we have a key generation algorithm, which from the parameters, um, system parameters outputs a user key pair. Now in UAS, users and issuers are the same, but issuers uh, have to, in addition, define this issuance function here, f is. This is an issuance function that will be governing the utility information the utility information at issuance time. So the information that issuers will require to receive from users in order to grant them new credentials. So issuers have to define this F is function and make it public alongside the, their public key. Uh, so for instance, let's say that Elrond wants to host a party at Rivendell, uh, but he will only allow people in uh, if they come from either Gondor, um, the Sire, the Black Forest, and maybe some hidden mountain. Um, so he will he will need to advertise that his in his issues function that he only accepts these credentials credentials from these places in order to grant a credential which we will call a Rivendell Pass. Now, openers, uh, we have also openers who will be extracting information from produced signatures. Uh, they have to run this key generation process, OKG, which produces a key pair, and pretty much like issuers, um, they have to define an opening function, which will be specifying what information they will be able to extract, and no more information will be extractable. Uh, as, as issuers, they have to make it public alongside their opener public. Uh, so, for instance, uh, Elrond may want that uh, whoever verifies authentication in his party is able to extract the um, the identity or the anonymize uh, all users who sign messages that contain the word Sauron. And this is precisely what Galadriel will be able to do, but he she has to make it to make her capability public. Now, in order to issue credentials, uh, users and issuers need to undertake this interactive process uh, in which the user runs the opt-in part and the issuer runs the issue part. The user has to, of course, specify his key pair and the public key of the issuer, which contains the issuance function, and potentially some endorsement credentials that he will use to prove that he meets this condition. Uh, and this both phase A is the attributes that uh, will be included in the new credential. And this year has to, of course, specify his private key. Uh, the public he has to know the public keys of the issuers that produce these credentials, and he will also receive the this y s value, which is the utility value as at issuance time. That will be we will see later that it will be output the output of this function, the issuance function. Um, as a result of this interactive process, the the uh, user receives a new credential, and the issuer receives a record or a log of the interaction. Now, assume that we have an anonymous hobbit here who is trying to get a Rivendell pass from uh, Elrond. So what he does is uh, state the public keys of the issuers of all the credentials that he's going to leverage, the attributes that he wants to get into his new credential, the utility function, at the utility value at issuance time, which is YS, and the proof of correctness of all the previews. Uh, now, what's important is that why this YS value is computed as is produced by computing this issuance function over the user's public key, his credentials, and the attributes that he wants to get into the new uh, the new credential. So here, for in our example, in a running example, Frodo or this Hobbit, we don't know who it is, will be state proving that he comes from the cyber, that he has a valid credential from the cyber. So Elrond checks that, and since he does not look either like Gollum or Sauron, he grants the credential. Now, in order to talk in an authenticated yet anonymous manner uh, within this within the party, um, users have to run this sign process. Uh, this sign process requires them to specify their key pair, also the opener public key, uh, which includes the utility function after signing or at opening, um, which in our example, if you remember, is the it states that any signature that mentions Sauron should be de-anonymizable. The user has to specify also the credentials that he will be leveraging for producing the signature, the message to be signed, and the utility function at signing time. This will be the function that produces the information that will be revealed alongside signatures, uh, this YF value here. Uh, and then the signature itself, which contains some stuff that we will see later. 
um, in our con concrete uh, construction. Um, so for instance, um, let's say that Gandalf is the bouncer in this party and he will only let people inside the meeting room if they prove that their age is uh, over 18, so that this why a value has to include something that proves that he's over 18. And uh, Gandalf also wants to know, as uh, Elrond, that who is talking about Sauron. So luckily, um, Frodo knows that Galadriel is exposing such, a, such an opening function that will only extract the identity of the signer if the message signed contains the word Sauron. So yeah. Uh, Brother basically has to leverage this evaluation function that is agreed upon between himself and Gandalf and has to pick Galadriel's open public key. Then when Gandalf receives an, an anonymous signature, he has to specify the public key of the opener, Galadriel in this case, the issuer public keys of all the credentials that were used by the signer, um, has to specify, the verifier has to specify the signature that he wants to verify, of course, the message and the evaluation function. And the result of this will be either one of zero. So with this, um, Gandalf can check uh, that the information that the, the designer of the signature, whether the designer of the signature was uh, over 18 or not. Um, and in case that he sees that the message being signed contains the word Sauron, he can happily go to Galadriel and ask her to open the signature, to the anonymized signature, or to extract utility from the signature. Um, for this, Galadriel will run the open um, uh, algorithm which requires the open secret key that includes the utility function after signing that, that was agreed to produce the signature uh, and of course the, the open secret key and it also receives the same argument as verify because it has to check that the signature is correct um, and the output will be a utility function at, uh, after signing or at opening and a proof of correctness that it has been computed correctly. So in our example, uh, Galadriel receives a, a, sign, a signature which is valid and contains the word Sauron, so she gets mad and she extracts the identity of the signer, uh, which is proven to be the output of the opening function over the user, the signing user public key, the credentials uh, that were used to produce the signature and the signed message. It's a function of all these three uh, arguments. And in this case, the signer was Frodo, so Galadriel tells to Gandalf that the signer was Frodo, it provides a proof of knowledge, um, of correctness. Um, so Gandalf, who is a very smart guy, say he knows that he should not trust anybody, basically, so what he does is run this judge algorithm that verifies that the proof was correct. Um, so yeah, he learns that the signer was Frodo. So, okay, that was the high-level syntax. Now about the security properties, we need to meet our two types as usual, anonymity and unforgeability. In the anonymity part, uh, we ensure that no more information about the user is leaked than what the user intended. And we have to protect anonymity at issuance time, meaning that no two obtain issue runs uh, should be linkable beyond what that the user uh, wanted to, to reveal. And the same for signatures. So no two signatures should be linkable, uh, meaning that um, the evaluation, the, the YF value and the Y of value should not, that should all the, all the information that potential verifiers and openers learn and nothing else beyond that. And of course, additions time, I didn't say, say it, but what's linkable is defined by the YS value. That's uh, the interactive protocol uh, includes. The affordability, um, uh, properties prevent data manipulation at different points. So we have affordability uh, property at issuance, which ensures that um, or guarantees that issuers are protected against malicious users, meaning that if a wireless value that is present in an interactive obtain issue protocol uh, is accepted by the issuer, then this value was derived from uh, correctly from the credentials uh, that the user already owns. Uh, we also have affordability for signatures. If uh, that uh, means that verifiers and openers are protected against malicious users that try to may try to manipulate the YF or Y of value, so the utility information at signing time and after signing time. And finally, we have the non-frameability property inherited from group signatures, um, which is kind of the same as before as uh, affordability for, for signatures, but from the point of view of users. So. Uh, this ensures that users will, uh, no no authority will be able to manipulate signatures or credentials in a way that can later be used to frame another user by producing a different Y of value or Y of value 
than what it should be. Okay, so those are the security properties. Now, how do we build generically UAS? Um, we have, um, uh, we define a, US, a type of UAS credentials which contain the following information. First, the user secret key, which is, uh, it will be signed in a blinded way by the issuer uh, and a vector of attributes that will be signed uh, in plain text. The first of these attributes will be the credential identifier and then a vector of an attributes, which can be uh, age, nationality, whatever we want. And finally, the credential is actually the signature, which is over all these values here. Um, and then we have also UAS signatures, which are composed first by the utility uh, value at opening, uh, at signing time, this YF value, uh, which is actually, as I said before, computed as the output of uh, the evaluation function over the user public key, the credential set that the user employs for signing and the message that is being signed. And what's important, and we will see later, is that the public key, the user public key needs to be bound to the credentials that the user is, is using. The, also a UAS signature includes, includes this COP value, which is an encryption under the opener public key of the utility value at opening time or after signing time. Uh, now this YOP value in turn is the output of the opening function over the user public key, the credentials that the user uh, leverage, leverages for signing and the message that is being signed. And finally, the third value of our UAS signature is a proof that proves that these two other values were computed correctly. To generically build this, we leverage uh, signatures over blocks of committed messages, which expose these algorithms. And being a type of parcel blind signature, we have to, uh, they of course include a blinding and unblinding algorithm. Um, oh, I'm verify which is missing here. Um, we also need uh, NCPA encryption and uh, non interactive zero knowledge proofs. Now, our concrete, well, our, our generic construction, the, the core of it are three NP relations. The first of them, we use it for ensuring that everything is correct, is correctly computed at the issuance line. Here, um, the first thing that the user will need to prove to the issuer is that he has generated his key pair correctly, uh, as, per, as is defined in the key generation algorithm. He will also need to prove that any credential that he uses uh, is bound to his user secret key and he, that he knows the credential identifier and the attributes that are part of it, and that this is a valid uh, signature. Uh, of the SBCM scheme and the underlying SBCM scheme. Next, uh, since the new credential is going to be produced as a new uh, signature of block of committed messages, the user will have to blind uh, the user secret key and, and for the sign overall signing process in general. So he has to prove that the his contribution to this interactive signing protocol has been co correctly computed from his user secret key credential identifier, uh, attributes, and randomness. And finally, and also very important, the user has to prove that the utility value at issuance time um, has been computed correctly from his user public key, the attributes that he wants to get uh, written into his new credential, and the identifiers and attributes that are part of uh, the endorsement credentials, the credentials that the user employs to request this new credential. Um, so this basically, this relation basically ensures, gives, uh, assurance to the issuer that everything has been computed correctly. And now for signatures, uh, signers or users have to actually prove a very similar statement. Um, so given their user uh, key pair, they have to prove that it has been computed correctly. As before, they also have to prove uh, that all the credentials that they leverage to produce the signatures, the signature are valid SBCM signatures or the attributes that they will be using for the opening and evaluation functions. Uh, they have to prove, users have to prove that the evaluation function, the, the utility function at signing time is the, up to the output of the evaluation function, which depends on these values, the user public key, the attributes and the identifiers of the credentials and the signed message. The user has to prove also that the utility value at after signing or at opening time is the, out, is the output of the FOP uh, function over these parameters. And finally, the user has to prove that the encrypted value that he includes with the signature is a correct, is is encrypted uh, is a correct encryption process under the of the utility value at opening time under the encryption the uh, openers public key. Uh, and finally, uh, the third relation, which is much more simple, is the opening relation uh, that will be run by openers 
who basically have to prove that um, the opener keeper has been computed correctly and that the utility value that they output is a valid decryption of the C value that's included within the UIS signature. Okay, so that's the main way in which UIS works, uh, the core at least. And now, in order to show you that they are really universal, I'm going to introduce this concept of UAS restrictions, which are basically uh, an instantiation of UAS that is tied to the to concrete issuance, evaluation, and opening functions. And picking the correct ones will allow us to inst to uh, emulate, so to speak, uh, other primitives like routine answers, for instance. For this, um, we have this setting as the so like in the ribbon of the party and. Uh, the issuer, verifier, and opener will be advertising a uh, specific uh, issue and evaluation and opening function. Concretely, Elrond uh, wants, in order to grant a credential, uh, he wants to learn the public key of the user who is requesting the credential. Then, on his side, Gandalf uh, will be um, um, requiring an evaluation function that outputs zero. Recall that group signatures have no utility at signing time, but he will require that any signer uses an opening function that allows him to learn the user public key, which is actually the user public, the, the opening function that Galadriel advertises in her opening public key. So uh, as in group signatures, uh, the users Ar uh, Aragorn, Boromir, and Frodo require, request a credential to, to um, Elrond, and they have to specify, to, to prove to Elrond that they know the corresponding secret key to their public keys. Um, so they get a uh, credential. This is the utility at, signing, uh, at issuance time that is defined by the issuance function that we chose. Uh, and then they can already start producing signatures. Uh, so they anonymously, any user can anonymously sign with this UAS restriction. And the utility value that this UAS restriction contains is zero, which is the one defined by the evaluation function. Uh, now Gandalf can, will, will verify the signature. Uh, we'll check that everything is correct. But let's say that uh, this signature contains the word uh, oh no, sorry. Um, that, that he wants to de-anonymize uh, the signer, so he goes to Galadriel, who, as advertised, can extract the public key of the signer. So this, since uh, they know which public key belongs to which user that requested that credential uh, at the beginning, they can, uh, in this way, extract the identity of the signer. So from UPKB, and Gandalf knows that the signer is Boromir, pretty much like in group signatures. Um, now for anonymous credentials, in order to emulate them as a UIS restriction, we use the same uh, issuance uh, utility function as before, as for block signatures. So basically the issuer has to learn the UPK, the public key of the requesting user. For um, utility at evaluation time, at signing time, the verifier requires that given the attributes that uh, are part of the credentials that the user employees for signing, he needs to be able to learn a subset D of those attributes. So basically, this function outputs the chosen subset of attributes. This actually emulates anonymous credentials with selective disclosure. And finally, uh, the opening function that is defined is the constant function to zero, which means that uh, no uh, utility after signing will be extractable. And this is the utility function that Galadriel advertises in her public key. So as before, uh, the three users request their credential by proving that they control the corresponding secret key. Uh, Elrond verifies it and grants them a ribbon del pass that includes their age. Um, and later, any of them can um, produce, uh, can authenticate, for instance, revealing their age attribute. Uh, Gandalf can verify that this that the credential of this signer actually contains an age which equals 41. And he might try to de-anonymize this authentication, but since the utility function, oh, this is a type of this, shouldn't be zero. But since the utility um, function that was agreed outputs always zero, then the signer is not anonymous and Boromir is happy. And ring signature is pretty much the same. We here don't need an issuer, so error goes away. And the um, uh, utility function defined by Gandalf at, or required by Gandalf at signing time uh, requires that the signer proves that his user public key belongs to this ring, which is a set of public keys. Um, so the output will be either one or zero. 
and uh, the opening function that, this, that the verifier requires is again zero. So the constant uh, function that output is output zero, meaning that string signatures will not be the anonymizable. And this is also the uh, opening function that is advertised by Collateral in her public key. So as in ring signatures, users can produce signatures uh, of ad hoc groups. So in this example, for instance, uh, this user is proving that his signature is either, uh, his public key is either UPKA, UPKB, or UPKF. And in a second signature, he will be proving that the user, his, his public key is either UPKB or UPKF. And this can be verified by, verified by Gandalf. Again, he can try to extract utility after uh, from the signature, so utility after signing. But since they agreed, uh, opening function always output zero, always output zero, he cannot extract any identifying information, pretty much like in vanilla ring signatures. And Boromir is happy because he remains anonymous. Uh, so as a recap, um, I've described how universal anonymous signatures work. We give a generalized model uh, that subsumes other Others like group signatures, anonymous conditional, and risk signatures. If I have failed to convince you about that, you can always check the paper, which contains formal definitions and proofs. Uh, we give a first generic construction of UIS uh, based on signatures over blocks of committed messages, encryption, and NISCs, and a concrete instantiation uh, using PBS Plus, Gamma, and Sigma proofs. Now, applications, um, in my from my point of view, the most interesting one is that. Once we have running implementations of this, we can have uh, from within the same library um, very similar schemes that offer us uh, multiple utility versus privacy trade-offs by defining um, which we can achieve by defining different issuance evaluation and operating functions. So, for instance, assume that you are designing a system and you think that in your first version of this system you don't need auditability. So you simply uh, set an, a constant operating function, a function that always outputs zero. But then this may be too ideal. So in your in second version of your system, you want to de-anonymize signatures that, that have been created by users that come from some country X. If the amount, the monetary amount that is included in these uh, signatures uh, uh, is over some threshold Y. So you can do this simply by changing the F of value without altering the rest of the construction and from the same library. Uh, but then in your v3, you realize that this was too privacy threatening, so you want to reduce it to linkability of users who that belong to some list L. Again, you don't need to remodel, proof, and implement from scratch. You simply need to change the F of value. And of course, you can also change the FF and F is values. But yeah, uh, this was the example. Um, and as I stated, all from the same library. Although there is a catch here, uh, because uh, for instance, the generic construction that we gave which is based on the, the concrete instantiation that we gave, which is based on BBS Plus, it is good and efficient for use cases or for utility functions that offer a selective disclosure. But it, not me, it may not be optimal for other uh, restricted function classes, so arbitrary predicates and stuff like that. So for this, we may need uh, more optimized implementations, specifically built for that purpose. This is very interesting future work. Uh, also, future work is allow issuers and openers to adjust their issuance and opening functions. Right now, they are bound to one concrete function that they advertise. Um, um, it would also be it would also be nice to allow multiple openers for the same signature and support for blind sing, blind issuance of attributes uh, in the issuance process. Um, of course, there are many more possible interesting future uh, lines of future work. Uh, so you have the conference pre proceedings and the full version available in these links, and I will be I will be very happy to answer any further questions that you have. So feel free to reach out in either in either of these places. Thank you.